Let's talk about the physiological effects of autonomic nervous system activation. So what do I mean by this? What happens when you have these, one of the two divisions um, kick in? So the two divisions of the autonomic nervous system, write them down. You've got your parasympathetic nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system. Another way of looking at these, um, you should know these terms, but what these are, are our rest and digest over here. And our fight or flight. Some people add in some more Fs there as well. Some are more accurate than others. We'll get back to one of them actually freeze is one of the other Fs. Um, the other F that I'm not gonna say we will actually get back to as a coordinated parasympathetic and sympathetic response in terms of reproductive behaviors. Um, so if you're being chased by a bear, your body is responding very differently than if you are sitting in front of the TV with um, some beers or root beers, whatever they are. Um, you notice I got some wolf ears here to go along with my bear. Okay, so what happens? Write down at least five things you can think of that is different in your body in this situation from this. So pause the video to do that. Okay, whether or not you've done this, I'm gonna do it. Low heart rate when you're resting, high heart rate when you're running from a bear. You might sweat you're gonna have decreased digestion. Rest and digest, increased digestion, right? Your food is going to be stored. So it's becoming glycogen. You're eating sugars and other stuff. You're going to store it as glycogen and fat. Over here, your glycogen and fat are going to be mobilized. So they can become glucose, become ATP, so you can run away. You know how ATP is involved in muscle contraction um, as well as all your body's processes. Um, along with heart rate, respiratory rate. So you're breathing faster. Breathing rate's pretty low down here. Okay. I'm gonna show you the same thing with a more complicated diagram. All these diagrams you're gonna, you can see there's lots out there on the autonomic nervous system. I want them to not look so scary. That way you're able to look at one and have it make sense to you. First of all, before we go into these different functions here, See what you remember here about this anatomy. We've got the parasympathetic nervous system in purple coming from the cranial region and the sacral region. So this is our crano, craniosacral division. Our sympathetic is coming from our thoracolumbar region. I'm sorry, all the way down through lumbar. What is missing from this picture? What's not shown that should be shown? The ganglia, right? This does not show the ganglia. So I'm just gonna put a note here with this slide. I like this picture. Let's see, I'm gonna run out of room if I do that. And put it over here. So that's that two neuron pathway. There's a preganglionic neuron and a postganglionic neuron. I just want you to be able to, oftentimes these images we get from um, various different resources highlight different things. That's why drawing your own picture is so helpful. That brings these all this stuff together. So let's go through this real quick. 
Um, what's your body doing in each of these situations? Rest and digest, fight or flight. We've said a lot of these already, right? So this is, we're gonna go from top to bottom. Some that might not be quite as intuitive, but all fit with the same idea of fight or flight versus rest and digest. Your pupils get dilated when you fight or flight because so you can see better, more light is coming in. Um, this is obviously also impacted by the actual light that's around, but relative to beforehand, pupils are gonna dilate. Pupils constrict when you're resting. You don't need to let in as much light. During fight or flight, you don't have salivation. This is all related to digestion. So there's several things here that are going to be related to digestion that I wanted to re remove that. Um, that I'm actually going to highlight in a, one color just to have those be emphasized. So these are ones, that's one that's related to when you digest food, you need to salivate more. Slow heart rate, increased heart rate, right? That one's pretty obvious. You're running from a bear. You need to get more oxygen to your, the, your body, throughout your body and get rid of that carbon dioxide. Along with that, there is respiratory rate and dilation actually of the airways to allow um, more air to come in when, you're, when you need more oxygen. So it makes sense of it, right? It makes sense. Stomach activity, it's stimulated here. So that's again, a digestive difference. This one is a meta metabolism change. So with parasympathetic, this is what I said on the previous slide, um, glucose released from the liver means that that glucose can be used to, to make ATP, right? That's going to be, that's what that's used for. We're gonna have less of that then. Oh. Right, here, if you have more glucose being released from the liver, it's more available for cells to make ATP. To make myself smaller here. Oops. And another digestive function, intestinal activity, right? Versus inhibition of intestinal activity. And then we've got contracting the bladder versus relaxing. So this is one, really just think of it this way. When you're scared, you might pee yourself. Okay, it's true. Um, because of the decrease in digestion, you also might jet yourself. Um, food, instead of being digestive, might just get passed through. So that actually is a thing. There's a couple more that we're going to, actually, no, right here, I've got them. So this one here that I skipped over before, this one is that adrenal gland that I mentioned. So this is going to act, these epinephrine and norepinephrine are going to act as hormones. So we'll come back to this special situation where this release comes from the adrenal gland only as part of a sympathetic response. This allows for a longer lasting, so you start running from the bear and you have a, a um, prolonged response where you still are able to continue to, um, to fight or flight for a prolonged time. Okay, last one is an, actually an example of both systems working together. So these oppose each other normally. I hope that's clear. You're either doing one or the other most often. That's not always true. Here's a situation down here where the two systems work together to have a function occur. So the parasympathetic nervous system promotes erection um, of the, geni the genitals. And then the sympathetic nervous system is actually gonna promote ejaculation or vaginal contraction in females. So for reproductive behavior, meaning erection and then um, ejaculation, both systems are needed.